So this video is titled Everything You Need to Know About Great Circles. And I'm sure many of us already understand the basics, but what I plan to do is show some additional features of great circles that you may not be aware of, and also some footage taken from a real aircraft when it is following a great circle to prove that the course is constantly changing. Let's start with the basics. So if you type the words great circle into a Google search, you get plenty of good descriptions and diagrams. A great circle is the largest circle that can be drawn on any given sphere. Any diameter of any great circle coincides with a diameter of the sphere, and therefore all great circles have the same center and circumference as each other. Quite simply, if you take a sphere and cut it in half, no matter where you start the cut, if you cut that sphere directly in half, the line of the cut represents a great circle. Great circles are used in navigation by aircraft and ships because following a great circle between any two points on a sphere will result in the shortest distance. Planes travel along the shortest route in three-dimensional space. This route is called a geodesic or great circle. While map projections distort these routes confusing passengers, the great circle path is the shortest path between two far locations. This is why pilots fly polar routes saving time and distance. So here we have an orange and a knife. That's not a knife. This is a knife. If we cut that orange in half, starting in any direction, in any orientation, as long as we cut the orange directly in half, the line of the cut on the surface of the orange represents a great circle. Great circles are significant to air navigation because any pilot will tell you that the shortest distance between any two points on the Earth will be achieved by following the Great Circle route. And this is why in any flying training syllabus, pilots are taught very early that the Earth is a globe and that the Great Circle is the shortest way to navigate around the globe. This is an air training manual from the departments of the Air Force and the Navy. And it shows in the early chapters, the shape of the Earth and also talks about great circles. Here we can see chapter 2, Earth and its coordinates. The Earth's size and shape. For most navigational purposes, the Earth is assumed to be a perfect sphere. There we can see diagrams clearly depicting the Earth as a sphere and again showing how the great circle path is achieved by cutting that sphere in half. To define locations accurately on the Earth, we use a latitude and longitude coordinate system. And you can see those lines here. The lines of longitude are called meridians, and they run from the North Pole directly down to the South Pole. Every meridian of longitude is a great circle path and runs in a true north, true south direction. You can see that as they move away from the equator to the north, and also to the south, they converge. And that means the spacing between the lines of longitude reduces as you get further away from the equator. The lines of latitude are called parallels of latitude because they are all parallel. They do not converge with each other. The equator is the only line of latitude that is a great circle. When we talk about great circles moving across the Earth, the meridians of longitude and the equator, the line of latitude halfway between the poles, are the only lines where the direction does not change. For any other great circle, the direction is constantly changing. So the ruler tool in Google Earth will draw a great circle path between any two points that you specify. If I start down here in Australia with the first point, and I move that cursor around, you can see the yellow line representing the great circle path between the two points. If I was going from Australia 
to Hawaii and I was flying along that great circle path, my true course would be constantly changing. The only time you can fly a great circle path without the course changing is if you are flying directly north or south or if you are flying directly east or west on the equator. So this ruler tool will show you the initial heading from the first waypoint, but it won't show you the constantly changing course that occurs when the Great Circle track is not running directly north or south. In fact, if we start with an initial heading of 90 degrees, you can see very easily that that Great Circle track is constantly curving towards the equator. Any Great Circle path that is not a line of longitude or the equator will constantly curve towards the equator. And if the initial track is 90 degrees, it will actually cross the equator one quarter of the way around the Earth. And the angle at which it crosses the equator will match the latitude where it runs directly east or west. So if we started at a latitude of 45 degrees south with an easterly heading, it would cross the equator one quarter of the way around the Earth at an angle of 45 degrees. If we started at 10 degrees latitude, it would still cross the equator one quarter of the way around the Earth, but this time at a more shallow angle of 10 degrees. So for some reason, there are still flat earthers out there who get very confused by this. Even though we start on a heading of 90 degrees, we are not continuing on that heading. I heard one flat earther say that if you fly 90 degrees from Australia, you end up in Central America. That's not true at all, because following this great circle path, your heading is changing significantly. In fact, 34 degrees south latitude in Australia means we would cross the equator at an angle 34 degrees less than 90. So that direction as it crosses the equator would be 056 degrees. If you actually did fly 90 degrees from Australia, from Sydney, you would be flying a path that is parallel to these lines of latitude and you would end up in South America at exactly the same 34 degrees south latitude that you started with in Sydney. So remember, the Great Circle Path is changing direction and we can actually see this occurring quite rapidly in an aircraft whenever we follow a Great Circle Path. So what I'm going to do now is show you a series of clips taken on a recent flight from Perth, Australia to Canberra, which is the nation's capital. Just to explain what you're going to see, this magenta indication, DTK, means direct track. That is the course that the aircraft is actually flying over the ground. This cyan number here, the heading, is the direction the aircraft is actually pointing. If you have no crosswind component, they will be the same number as you see here. If we had a strong crosswind, the heading and the track across the ground could be quite different. In the clip, I pan across to the clock so that you can see the accurate UTC time, 0415. I then pan down to the flight management system so you can see the accurate track being displayed. Track 100 degrees, drift 0 degrees. It was all tailwind, there was no crosswind component, and therefore the heading to fly that track was also 100 degrees. And what you're going to see is that following this great circle track, in the space of just minutes, the track changes from 100 degrees to 99 and then to 98. All the while, we are tracking towards the same waypoint. Here you can see. Romper is the next waypoint. We are currently 92 nautical miles and the track is 100 degrees. Just to show you the display from the iPad, 
this was the route. It went quite south and here is Waypoint Riddle and here is Waypoint Romper. So the clips you're about to see were all taken between Riddle and Romper with the true course changing as we kept getting closer. The flight management system flies a great circle track between any two waypoints. So between Riddle and Romper, we were flying a great circle track and you will see that the course was changing towards the equator. So at 92 nautical miles from Romper, the true course was 100 degrees. As we approach Romper, that has now changed to 098 degrees. Two degrees of course direction change, and that is following the Great Circle Path. Now, if you have a keen eye, you might have noticed something. See the heading there, 097? That is actually what the aircraft is flying at this point. In the other display, you can see the cyan indication is still showing 100 degrees. That is not what the aircraft is actually flying. That is the position of the heading bug. But we're in LNAV mode, so the aircraft is not following the heading bug. It is following the true course across the ground. What I can do now is center that heading bug to match the actual heading of the aircraft. And we do that very easily just by pressing the button there. Push sync. When I push that, the heading bug syncs to the actual heading of the aircraft. Now 096 degrees. But what is significant here is the direct track. 098 degrees, that is the true course across the ground. And that constantly changes when flying a great circle route. So as we just saw with actual footage from a real aircraft, the true course is constantly changing while following a great circle path. When flat earthers show you this demonstration and claim that going east from Australia will cross the equator and take you to Central America, you can now explain to them 
that this is because the great circle path changes direction. You are not going east at this point. It deviates from east almost immediately when you start traveling. It simply comes down to the fact that these flat earthers just don't understand how great circles work. If you actually were going east from Australia, you would be flying parallel to these lines of latitude and you would end up in South America. So later in the flight, I brought up this flight test data page to show you two things. Firstly, this 0.99 represents the G the aircraft is experiencing. Because we are flying east at high speed and with the rotation of the Earth, we are moving around curvature faster than if we were sitting on the ground. And this creates enough of a centrifugal force to reduce the G by 0.01, which we can see on the aircraft instrument here. Additionally, what you will see here is that there are constant corrections being made to the roll, less than one degree, but constant and frequent. And this is how the aircraft continually corrects itself as it's flying along a precise ground track. These constant small roll corrections are how the aircraft compensates for crosswind and the Coriolis effect. It is undeniable and this flight test data page shows it occurring clearly. So just a couple of final points on great circles and then I'm going to eat this orange. I have placed a number of elastic bands on the orange to represent different great circle tracks. The green one represents the equator. The red one can represent any meridian of longitude passing through the north and the south pole. And the yellow line represents any other great circle path that is not a line of longitude and not the equator you'll notice that they all intersect each other 180 degrees apart. You will also notice with the yellow line that it crosses the equator at an angle equal to the maximum latitude reached. When you see it in three dimensions like this, that makes perfect sense. So I've just added a fourth rubber band, the blue one, to represent yet another random great circle path you will notice that it crosses each of the other great circles 180 degrees apart. So remember, if the great circle path is not a meridian of longitude, and if it is not the equator, the direction will be constantly changing as you fly across the Earth.